All right, I'm just going to talk you through um, how I calculated the sound volume on this AC, 5 horsepower AC motor. First thing I did is I imported the SolidWorks model that we had gotten from the vendor. That is basically a bunch of uh, um, solid objects. And what I'm going to do is break this off into the fan, uh, to the guard, and to the body. So the first thing I'm doing here is creating a part that is just the guard. And I did that by deleting all the other bodies of this project. And now I'm going to go ahead and undo uh, the deletion of the other bodies. And now I'm going to um, struggle through deleting everything except for uh, the fan. And uh, basically I just uh, click on the fan, see which body it is. Um, and then delete all the other bodies. Um, save it off as a new SolidWork part, and then hit undo, and do it for the rest. So at this point, I have essentially the guard and the fan saved as two um, SolidWork parts. And now I'm going to do a little bit of simplification for the rest of the body of the fan, of the, of the motor. And I do that by just saving the front, um, the front plate, if you will. So um, I'll delete everything but the front plate and the axle, or the uh, the drive shaft. I'll keep the drive shaft in there as well. And once those two are um, uh, remaining, the only ones remaining. Now I'm going to do is uh, create a sketch on this front surface of that flange. And uh, that's going to be the um, diameter of the circle that I'm going to extrude um, for roughly the length of what the, um, what the motor is. And it doesn't really matter. It's just giving us a rough idea. There's not a lot of sound generated further down here. But um, I thought I'd get rid of all the other debris just so that way when we mesh the project, it doesn't get all hung up by all the other screws and bolts and nuts. Um, I'm going to just really quickly get rid of the shaft that sticks off the end just to keep the computations quicker. There's no reason to keep any more detail than you need uh, when you're doing something like this. The fewer the details, um, the simpler uh, the project and the easier it is to mesh. So there you have it. Um, there's the motor and uh, now what I'm going to do is just create an assembly. Um, of the of the motor, uh, the body, um, and the uh, the guard, and the uh, the fan. So we'll do that real quick. There's one um, one thing I need to talk about is when I actually looked at this model, um, the the way the model is mounted together um, is the guard and the fan blades actually hit each other. And that doesn't work for when you're doing a simulation. Um, and I'll explain that why in a little bit. But as you see here right now, I'm just going to go ahead and mount the, um, the fan by just, uh, or I'm sorry, the fan connected to the um, body. And I'm just going to use the um, origins of those two parts. Since they came from the same source, their origin should be in the same spot. So I can uh, just make those using the origin, and they snap in place, and that's perfect. But the but the guard, I have to offset a little bit, and I'm going to do that. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of ways to uh, mate in SolidWorks. I'm not a, a professional in understanding how all the mating works, but I'm going to mate the um, the uh, the two planes that are um, basically in parallel to the axis, so so the right plane here, and so that gets it. Uh, aligned in those two planes and then the third plane I'm going to put a little offset so that way the guard sticks a little bit further to the left with respect to the body. Uh, just type in a little bit of an offset number in there and uh, that way we've got some clearance. All right so you can see that there is a little bit of a gap from the original design but I guess I kind of really have to do this. Um, otherwise, the whole meshing fails on this when you create a rotating region. So this is the part where there's interference, um, or there was interference if I wouldn't have that offset. So if you take a look here at this cross-section, 
um, by moving that over a little bit, I now have clearance there between that uh, that uh, um, mounting hole and in the guard and the body. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new part. Uh, it's just going to be a simple disc, and it's going to be large enough uh, to enclose the fan. So it's going to be 8.4 inches in diameter, and it's going to be a little bit more than an inch. The fan itself is exactly one inch uh, thick. So I'm going to make this 1.02 inches thick, and that will allow me to just kind of enclose the fan blades in this thing that's called the rotating region. I just put a little uh, fillet on the end there, and uh, we'll save that as the rotation part. And uh, you'll see how we use that later, but anything that's within this rotation part is going to be spun by the uh, flow simulation. So if you look here, I need to go ahead and put that um, part that I just created uh, and enclose the fan with it. So we'll just go ahead and uh, demonstrate my awesome um, ability to perform mates in SolidWorks. Uh, so we'll watch me struggle through this here real quick. So I'm doing a concentric mate first. Uh, that'll get the axes lined up. And then I'm going to just go up 0.01 inches from the... Um, edge of the fan to the enclosing um, part. So I'll go from there to here, make sure that's uh, a distance of um, 0.01 inches, and that should give us a 0.01 inches on both sides of the fan. And make sure I did the offset the correct way. So um, again, that's going to be the rotating region, and uh, so that's uh, fixed in place. Um, now there's one other, um, uh, one other thing we need to do. Um, is that uh, I've noticed when you mesh this uh, fan, um, even at the full meshing capability of, of SolidWorks, um, it doesn't give you enough detail on the fan blades and the great holes of the guard. But uh, SolidWorks allows you to um, create a higher definition area of meshing. So you just create a, a volume, uh, another part, uh, kind of like the rotating volume. But this one will be a little bit bigger in diameter um, and a little bit, uh, uh, so we'll go 10 inches in diameter and 3 inches thick. And this one then will um, uh, I'll place this over the area where the guard and the fan are in the assembly. And then I'll instruct SolidWorks when it does the flow simulation that this is the area that it should uh, do an increased meshing operation on, and we'll do that later. So we'll just uh, uh, do some more uh, mating here, do a concentric, and then just make sure that we're um, containing the uh, um, the uh, guard and we'll maybe have a half an inch on both sides. So that should kind of straddle that whole area that I want higher detail in. All right, so that's our assembly. Um, and now we can go ahead and start a flow simulation here. And uh, what we're going to do here um, is just use the wizard um, and uh, ignore that. Uh, just use the wizard and we'll um, go ahead and uh, create the simulation. Um, the important part here is that this is external. That means there's going to be air all around the part. I'm not actually enclosing the air inside of um, in a volume. I'm just using anything outside of the part to be air. Um, and I'm just using standard temperature and, and pressure for the air. Um, the computation area here is huge, so we need to kind of bring that down. So I'm going to struggle a little bit with meters um, and uh, bring this down to be um, just the area just around the fan. So I'll do that both in the uh, the red, green, and blue axes here. And uh, um, give me a second to finish that up. All right, so now our computational area is nice and small. So that looks good. Uh, next thing we need to do is um, uh, define the rotating region. And so we're going to do that just by clicking on that part. And you can see the blue arrow and circle of rotation. So that should be good. So um, we're going to set the RPM to 
3,600 RPM for that area, and that converts it to radians per second. We'll assume that that's doing right. We're increasing the mesh of the overall um, project there. And now what I'm going to do is create a, a more localized mesh by using that uh, part, that mesh part, and uh, go from there. There are some sliders that you can increase that. And then the last thing is I want to do is make sure that when we do the calculations, that the mesh area and the rotating area are not part of the, the meshing operation. Um, usually when you pick the rotating area, it automatically excludes it, but when you do something like a higher uh, detailed mesh area, um, it doesn't automatically exclude it, so you kind of got to watch out for that. So now I'll go ahead and uh, run the meshing and then the whole uh, calculation. Let that run, and I'll just go ahead and um, uh, split, and now we're done. Um, probably took about five minutes to do that. Um, First thing we want to do is I want to show you what the mesh looks like. Um, so we're going to go ahead and actually physically hide the parts and then just show the meshing uh, um, part that it created. So just click all surfaces and zoom in and kind of show you that it did seem to capture pretty good the, um, the resolution, the details with all those triangles it had to create. So we're going to use that as good. Um, Probably, if we wanted better results, we could probably increase the mesh of that local area a little bit more. Um, and uh, so now what I'm going to do is just show back to the model again, uh, hiding the two, the meshing area and the rotating area. Now this one's uh, interesting. I'm going to actually, um, on the front of the fan, so I'm going to start with the plane that's um, at zero. I'm going to drag that towards the front of the fan. I guess it's the back of the fan, where the air is drawn into the fan. Into the, um, fan. And I'm going to be um, uh, creating 200 particles. And uh, then we're just going to see what those look like in terms of velocity as they go through. And this creates a little study where it kind of shows the air paths uh, going through. And so you can kind of see all the errors, uh, air pass little arrows are created from that plane I set up, and then they increase in velocity um, as they go, uh, get drawn in and then blown over the fan. And the thing to look here is what is the speed of the air going across the fan? That's really something that, uh, you know, we want to kind of pay attention to to see what the cooling is of the fan along the, the body there. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and now the main thing is uh, to know how loud this is. And so for that, um, there's a bunch of, you can use any of these uh, tools to view it. Um, this one actually seems to be pretty nice. Um, if you just create a, a kind of a translucent area that shows um, uh, sound power level, which is basically decibels. And I'll put a little uh, opacity in that so that we can kind of see through them. And so you can see kind of the red, uh, there's not too much red, but that's kind of our total top decibel level that this is calculated. So that's kind of coordinates or correlates with what we've been um, seeing there. So that's basically it. So next video, we're going to make changes to the fan and see what happens.